for the next design, we're going to do this one. We're going to recreate this Instagram post you see right here. We are going to just start a fresh new document. And we are going to bring in that photo that we found. If you ever want to look up these photos on Pexels, you can always type in the text in Pexels or type in the number and you should be able to find the photo, but please use other photos. Sometimes photographers tend to remove photos and add new ones every day. So feel free to use something kind of similar and you don't have to find the same exact photo. So I'm going to drag that photo right into the document. That'll make it a little bit easier. It also automatically makes it a smart object, which is kind of handy. So now I can kind of crop this because right now this is interesting. But I really want to, when you have an Instagram post or social media post, they're seen pretty small on a phone. So you really want to have a high emotional impact and connection with the person and the action that they're doing. They're jumping, they're in the middle of some experience and you want to capture that. So I was going to zoom in a little bit more on the boy and click enter. So let's add a really dynamic pop of color with a gradient map. So let's go to our adjustments panel and go to gradient map. So we can click on gradient map. And of course there's a lot of different things we can do. We could do one that's mostly warm tones. And you're really going to have, this is a lot, uh, has a lot of highlights in it. So you're really going to see a lot more of an effect when we change the highlights. I want to kind of have a little, I don't want it to be pink but I don't want it to be red. I want it to be kind of in the middle and that's a kind of a popular color choice. It's not quite pink, not quite red. There's just kind of in between that point that I'm going to find here and do like a very high saturation. And I think it might help if I take this darker color and bring out some more shadows or even better, I can add some blue tones to this. So I'm going to keep it kind of at this darker level and bring it down to blue. And what that does is you have the warm and the, and the cool kind of together, working together. There we go. So there's my gradient map. I can always add another adjustment layer if I want to change brightness contrast, make the photo brighter are darker so I can read some text a little bit better because remember high contrast doesn't work with with uh, a quote or typography on top. So let's go to brightness contrast. Let's just reduce the brightness just a tad a little contrast to add that pop. So let's add some typography. Let's take the type tool. Make it a little bit bigger and it's kind of funny because they, they're not popping out because we need to just go ahead and make this white. And you know what's happening is the gradient map is on the top, so it's applying the same gradient map filter on top of the typography. So even though the typography is white, see right here, it has that gradient map applied to it. So let's bring the words on the very top layer and we don't have that problem anymore. So I really liked this typography. It's called a Brill text. Let's make this, these words a little bit bigger. And the S and the D are super close. And I just want to have a little bit more leading. So we're going to go to properties, go down and just add just the tiniest bit of leading. Do 26. Let that breathe a little bit. So now we need to do some kind of anchoring because right now we have a great photo. We have some good typography. But we need like a graphical element to really tie them together. So we have this person jumping. There's a lot of action. And we have this simple typography that's left or right. It's not really doing a whole lot. So we can add a small graphical element to play against him jumping, kind of in a diagonal way. So what if we did diagonal rectangles to frame the typography? So what we're going to do is we're going to get a rectangle tool. Just make a simple rectangle. We're going to fill it with white. Get our move tool. Move it. Let's go ahead and make a duplicate. So we're going to hold down option and drag or just duplicate your layer. 
So now we have two of these. Let's select both of them and let's just rotate it a little bit just to give it an angle. Press enter and let's put these on either side of the typography. So all this is doing is just bringing everything together. And once again, these graphic elements are not required for everything. It just depends on what you're using it for. So there we go. We created a couple more little, small, quick uh, posts using what we've learned with adjustments and typography and shapes. So hopefully you enjoyed this editing section. I just refilmed this to make it a lot longer and a lot more detailed. I wanted to make sure you understood each adjustment so that you can utilize that when doing design projects.